and welcome to Great British Ghosts. Later, I'll be heading to London to one of the most haunted pubs in the city. But first of all, I've come to Nottingham, to the Galleries of Justice, a place where thieves and murderers would have been tried, jailed, and some of them even hanged right on these very steps. It's a building with a long and horrible history. This current building was used as a courthouse and jail since 1780. And over the last 230 years, literally hundreds of prisoners have been executed here. Not surprisingly, it's believed to be one of the most haunted locations in Britain. Chris Arnold is a paranormal investigator who's experienced strange phenomena both in the cells below and in the main courtroom upstairs. Okay, so we're in the main courtroom now. Um, this was actually used up until 1986, so it's used, you know, fairly recently. It's one of the hubs of paranormal activity in, in the, the galleries of justice. Um, the main thing that's seen is uh, black shadows darting kind of back and forth on, on the balcony. Many different people have seen these. Um, and then the other thing that I personally witnessed in here, we had a, a public kind of ghost hunt um, and we all saw flashing lights up on this corner. Um, it's very strange, there, as you can see, aren't any lights up there at all. Um, what do you mean flashing lights? It's it was like like a, almost like a firework effect, really? like glittery... Um, yeah, kind of balls of light. Um, it, was, it was just very strange, can't explain it. The thing that, that a lot of people have heard in here, um, blood-curdling screams, uh, moans, uh, sighs, just the sound of people just in, in kind of sheer agony or despair. Well, there must have been a lot of despair in here. I mean, this is where people were sentenced to either their misery or their death. Yeah. And obviously, relatives that were sitting listening. Exactly. I mean, not only the, the victims themselves, but the relatives would have been in, in massive despair, wouldn't they? Oh, so if you imagine coming in here and hearing that your loved one, you know, is going to be hanged outside on the steps, um, you know, there, there are going to be people moaning and, and all, all kinds of horrible feelings. The other interesting thing that happened in here in 1799 was they actually did a public dissection um, on the table here um, and members of the public paid to come and watch one of the hanged people be, be cut up and have his entrails kind of displayed. Now it was supposed to act as a deterrent uh, to show that this is what would happen after you got hanged but it was so popular that they had to stop it because people saw it as a great day's entertainment. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? Weren't they barbaric in well, those days? Well, exactly. Where's the empathy? The Galleries of Justice is known as one of the most haunted places in the UK. In, in one study, it was kind of voted the most haunted building in the UK. There's a lot of activity that happens here. Once the accused were found guilty, there was only one way for them to go, and that was down to either misery or execution. Ah, Michaela, welcome to the county jail. Would you like to follow me? Thanks. I should take you down to our main cell block, which is located just around the corner here, where men and women were mixed all those years ago. This way? Yeah, down here, yes. There are just over a dozen cells in all, stretching further and further underground. The oldest ones dated back to medieval times, and the conditions here, even just over a century ago, must have been appalling. Down this corridor are main cells, but when this prison was full to capacity, you get about 70 odd inmates in around 15 cells on a couple of levels here. And this is what we call our night cell. Oh. So not terribly big? No, and you've also got to bear in mind you have to share this space. So you're not by yourself by any means. This is designed for three inmates. So you and two strangers, you can still see the rings on the wall where the hammocks used to be. Oh, so they'd actually get a bed? Oh, only if you pay, I'm afraid. If you didn't have any money, then you sleep on the floor. Uh, that is also your privy, so be careful where you lie down. 
privy, you mean toilet? I'm afraid so, yeah. And it's your responsibility to clean it out in the morning. And how long would prisoners have to stay here for? Well, it's a night cell, so only locked actually in the room in the night. They would let you out in the day, which is nice of them. Uh, but you could be here for two weeks to up to a month. You're just passing through. You might be transported to Australia or executed in a couple of weeks. So you're just passing through to another location. You're not going to stay here for years, which is a good thing. I don't think you'd live that long if you did have to. Obviously, there's been a lot of torment, um, a lot of pain and misery here, and a lot of death. Um, so the first type of haunting we believe to be a kind of replay or an echo of things that would have happened here in the past. Um, the second type of haunting uh, we call intelligent haunting, um, where we believe it's an actual spirit, the soul of someone who, who has died, who is still active here, still walking the building, uh, taking an interest in what is going on um, and interacting with people. This is actually probably the most modern part of the jail. Uh, here we have the women's wing, the laundry, mm -hmm. where women are expected to do washing all day long, eight hours in fact, in silence. So they weren't allowed to talk? Well, no, talking spreads criminal activity. That's tough for women. So it is fate off, yes. In fact, I've walked through here a few times and on a number of occasions, the old dolly tub there has been rattling away. By oh. itself? Maybe someone didn't finish their work, I don't know. But yes, it is a bit strange when it's quiet. So that just moves all by itself, making a noise. Yes. That's quite creepy. It is a bit creepy when you're on your own. <laughs> but in here is where they would sleep. This is their cell. So this is the women's quarters in the prison? It is the women's room. This was built in the 1850s for all the girls in one room. So you can imagine six to ten girls sharing one space. So of course in the evening you're incarcerated, so you'd be locked up and that's where you'd be sleeping. In a bed with your hair in it, off your own head, in a mattress. And you do have a chamber pot for the loo. So, not on the floor, thank goodness. Stephen, I've got to say that compared to upstairs, this isn't that bad. Uh, no, it is the most modern part of the jail, but uh, it does get a lot worse, I'm afraid. Do most people feel that it's an uncomfortable, scary environment? Most people find the galleries of justice to be very scary. Um, now, whether this is because of suggestion, because they know it to be haunted, um, or because of, of what a, a negative atmosphere kind of lingers here from, you know, from what it was in the past when it was actually used as a prison. Gosh, it gets dark down here. This already feels grisly. Yeah, you'll need your light here, I'm afraid because this is what we call the dark cells. And what is this bit? Ah, now that is one of our two pits where you would go if you couldn't pay for that cell upstairs, remember? People were put in there. Yeah, if you've got no money, but uh, that's for the real low lives, you see. And what, what sort of era is that then? That's from the 18th century. And how long would they be in there? Maybe even until you're being transported to Australia. It could be a month, two months. Oh my goodness, that is really grim and grisly in there, isn't it? Well, you can see why they pay now for something better. <laughs> Yes. Whilst well, over here we have our solitary confinement cells, dark cells as they're called. Oh goodness gracious, what did you have to do to come in here? Cause trouble whilst you're in the jail mainly. In fact, I believe many paranormal groups love to go in here and see how long they can actually stand it. I think the record is about ooh, 10 minutes on their own. Now this leads to the exercise yard. And although it's outside, it's actually supposed to be the most haunted part of the building. Well, I'm not surprised, because the first thing I can see is the gallows. Yes, public hangings were abolished in the 1860s and it was moved into this yard. And how many people were hung, hanged here? One. Just one? One man, one man who had slit a young lady's throat was executed in this yard in 1877. So he had his neck broken by William Marwood, very good hangman. And then he was buried beneath this yard. And how many people are buried under here? Well, if you look on the wall behind you, you can still see the headstones of some of these condemned men. We're not sure how many are actually buried here because you didn't always get a headstone. So these are the lucky ones. This is the man I just mentioned, Thomas Gray, mm -hmm. who was hanged in his very yard. The rest of them were hanged in the street outside. So this area has a lot of paranormal activity. What, what have you seen? Well, me personally, I was actually talking to somebody as I am right now to you and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a movement and I looked up and saw a figure move through that doorway there, across that archway, a figure in what looked like a, 
a uh, jailer's outfit. It made me look twice. I actually went over and checked afterwards to see if anyone was there, and there wasn't. And it did make me think, ooh, that's very strange, because I wasn't used to it, you see. Is that an apparition that's been seen before? Yes, apparently somebody has seen a lot at the top of the stairs as well, coming down into the yard. And have you seen it since? I haven't, but somebody else has. The strange thing about the building is it's constructed on the back of a cliff. So you come in at street level, you go down from the courts, down to the jail, and you go down on a number of levels until you reach the sandstone at the bottom, which is, of course, all been carved out here into caves, as you can see. Stephen took me down to the deepest and oldest part of the jail and handed me back to paranormal investigator Chris Arnold, who wanted to show me the most haunted area in the whole place. Oh my goodness, look at this. What was down here? So, we've got down here, um, used to be a chapel. Uh, used to be used as a chapel area. Um, a lot of people have heard the sound of what appears to be uh, kind of chanting, uh, maybe monks, kind of religious mantra being chanted over and over again. Um, so there was an actual chapel down here? What a it weird place to have a chapel. Yeah, the area would have been used as a chapel, so, so we believe, anyway. Um, we've had a few strange experiences down here. Um, the most common thing that we have found, and other groups have found, um, is stones are thrown at the actual the group that are down here investigating. Actually thrown? Yeah, by uh, kind of unseen, unseen hands. And not Very coming strange. from the roof. That's uh, obviously our first, um, our first thought. We check, you know, can bits of, you know, the the uh, sandstone kind of fall off. Um, that might explain the odd occurrence, but we've had it happen um, on request. So we've basically, you know, said if if there is anyone with us, can you, can you throw a stone? And a stone has been thrown across the room. Have there been any other experiences like that where, it, where there are physical feelings of, of having spirits and ghosts around you? Yes, the Galleries of Justice is uh, perhaps a little unusual um, with the amount of actual physical, uh, what we would term kind of poltergeist type activity. So upstairs on the main uh, cell corridor, people have had doors slam in their face. And one of the things a lot of people report is that they've been walking along and felt like someone has just pushed past them um, and there's been absolutely no one there. And it, it leaves people feeling very, very frightened. So would you say this is one of the main places for paranormal activity, right down here? Yes, down here in the caves appears to be you know, where, the, where the most paranormal activity happens. I'll tell you, whether there are ghosts here or not, I don't like this place. It's not nice, it's is it? It's eerie and it's just horror stories, real nasty stories in here. If there are such things as ghosts, it's no surprise that they would be here at the Galleries of Justice. The amount of suffering, uh, negative feeling that has occurred here over almost 700 years, um, it's no surprise that, that the place is haunted. The galleries of justice were closed with the prison reform in the late 1800s, shortly after the last person was hanged. They closed literally overnight, so it's not surprising that there are a few lost and tormented souls still floating around. I'll tell you something, I find this place extremely eerie and shocking. the Viaduct Tavern in the City of London. Nowadays it's a very busy, vibey area, but it used to be surrounded by slums and prisons. Think the film Oliver Twist and you'll get the general idea. Now though, this pub is one of the most haunted in London. The Viaduct is one of the last examples of an old Victorian gin palace left in the City of London and its garish interior was designed to look like an opera house. Back in the days of Charles Dickens, its clients would have been the poor working class of the capital, as the tavern was in a very disreputable area and right next door to two major prisons. Richard Jones is a world-renowned expert on Dickensian London, 
and knows all about the infamous ghosts of the Viaduct Tavern. The Viaduct Tavern is incredibly haunted. Uh, most of the hauntings tend to happen down in the cellar and there's numerous landlords down in the cellar who've uh, had taps on the shoulder. One landlord had to go speak to him, say there's just us two down here now. The rooms upstairs are, are fairly haunted as well. In 1982, the then landlord's daughter was left in charge one Sunday and she'd uh, closed up after the Sunday morning session. She'd gone upstairs, sat down on the sofa and was uh, reading the paper when suddenly she heard footsteps come racing up the stairs and the door opened, the paper was snatched from her hand, dropped to the floor, the door slammed shut and the footsteps went back down the stairs and she searched the pub and there was no sign of anybody. So it's down here, there's a lot of history and a lot of paranormal activity. If you just turn left through that doorway and head straight ahead. Through here? Through this one here. And this is where the oppression almost really hits you. Well, gee, it's cold down here. <laughs> we're uh, experiencing the, uh, the effect of the cooling system for the beer. We're, we're in the pub cellar, but we're in a very historic site because we're sandwiched between the sites of two prisons. Over on this side used to be a debtor's prison called the Gillspur Street Compter. And over on this side, across the road from here, used to be one of the most infamous prisons in London's history, Newgate Prison. Why was it so infamous? Well, it's infamous because it's, uh, it's one of the oldest prisons in London, but conditions in there were absolutely horrific. And of course, um, people were in there for all sorts of felonies, murder, theft, children were in prison there, and people were actually executed in the square opposite uh, for, for over a hundred years. So it really is not just an historic spot, it's a spot with a very good, great deal of gruesome history. Thank you, thank you very much. Too, too kind. <laughs> Gee, it's dark and dingy down here, it's isn't it? Hot. Have you noticed the atmosphere has changed as well? It's Completely. Like and uh, we've left, we've well and truly left the 21st century behind here. I mean, this is what some of the cells would have been like in, in the prisons. I mean, don't forget, when you went into prison, you were really left, left to fate. Uh, you might be, have a little bit of money and be able to pay uh, for a bit of luxury, but a lot of people would have been fed. I mean, what some people claim is, for example, the holes here in the ceiling are where people used to walk by upstairs and the debtors would sort of push up against them, crying out for alms or money or even food. Food would be dropped down. But of course, a great pleasure of Londoners was to taunt the prisoners, so it wouldn't just be food that got dropped down on them through this. So if, they, if that was the case, it would have been a horrendous place to be. And certainly it's indicative of what several of the cells would have been like, certainly in the debtor's prison. And you can imagine what it would be like here in clothes, the darkness sort of encroaching around you. And you can imagine just the executions on the other side of the road taking place, and you'd listen to the crowds, the excited babble of the crowds, and they'd start arriving the night before an execution. And of course, uh, not, not just you, but the, the whole felons who are waiting to go to their deaths the next morning, they'd be here in their cells and they'd hear the crowd striking up with songs such as, oh my, I think I'm going to die, and uh, all sorts of songs like that. And then of course, just before eight, uh, the, the bell of St. Sepulchre's Church opposite would start tolling and they'd be brought out onto the scaffold and the noose would then be placed over their, their neck, the hood placed over their head, and they'd stand there in the darkness, the crowd all around them, and then at eight o'clock, that bell would start its final, its strokes eight, and on the final stroke of eight, the trap was pulled and you are plunged into eternity. Your last eight strokes of life. So that's the history. What about the hauntings? Well, this is an incredibly haunted spot. And uh, one of my favorite stories concerns a landlord here in the 1980s. And he was tidying up in this room. And the door was open, a light was on, and there he was tidying up the way. And he turned and suddenly the light went out, the door slammed shut, and a voice from the corner snarled. There's just us two down here now. Oh my goodness, he must have been terrified. Well, needless to say, within a few moments, there was only it down here. He was back up in the bar having a brandy. Oh. <laughs> Where's the next one? It's this one over here. And uh, believe you me, this, this is where it all kicks off. After you this time. Thanks. This is where most paranormal activity is recorded, where people sense things, things happen to them. And also, it, to me, it's one of the most oppressive parts of the entire subterranean region down here. It's certainly very grim looking. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> so what's been experienced down here? 
Well, it, it's, this is a place where mediums are often overcome. Uh, mediums will come in here and they'll pick up on things. Uh, there are some faints, many become nauseous, and all agree there's a feeling of utter hopelessness and helplessness emanating from here. The other reason, of course, is that ghosts often appear where there are sources of water. You often find that where a ghost appears, there'll be an underground spring or an underground uh, brook or uh, underground stream. And oddly enough, just down here, there is just such an item. Because uh, this, this cell used to flood an awful lot. And uh, it was always a bit of a mystery as to why it should happen. Until they got a plumber in who made a discovery that down here, we have a water source. But it's... <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that a sewer? It's, well, it is now, and uh, it's actually a tributary of one of London's most infamous rivers, the River Fleet. So this could have a lot to do with why this is one of the most haunted parts of the pub. Well, I've certainly learned a lot about how horrific life was for thieves and murderers in jail before the 19th century with so much despair, hopelessness, and evil history surrounding the galleries of justice and the Viaduct Tavern here in London, it's not surprising that both are renowned for being haunted. See you next time. Bye-bye.